Uh, welcome to the Gritty Bowman Podcast. This week we're going to do something a little different. Um, I'm out here where I grew up. This is... Um, I, I kind of grew up on a commune. It occurred to me recently that a lot of people that are following the podcast have no idea who I am or the Gritty Bowman since we haven't really got into that um, in any of the podcasts. We do have our website and we have some films on there. And they, they, talk, they show some of our, our hunting exploits and stuff like that but we haven't really got into you know who we are part of that's because uh my hunting buddies one lives in idaho anthony and the other one ben my cousin ben he lives in west virginia so we don't really see each other the way that we um we used to so we'll do some podcasting together when we get together uh at some stuff we have planned coming up as our hunting seasons get closer and closer. But uh, anyway, uh, my name is Brian Call and I grew up uh, in Oregon City. This right here is kind of my stomping ground. Um, my family, I live kind of on a commune. There's about five families out here that are all my aunts and uncles and their children, so my cousins. And we grew up out here in the sticks, not far from Abernathy Creek in Oregon City out on Redland Road and uh, we we uh, family's been you know a big part of our lives and my cousin Ben and I grew up out here running around um, and uh, we've been hunting together since we were kids and then we met Anthony years later uh, we knew him from high school we grew up together we went to church together but I didn't really uh, start hunting with Anthony until you know I was you know, approaching my 30s. So uh, that said, uh, today we're outside here on our on our land in Oregon City. I wanted to come out here and test some equipment. Um, I got a I drew a bear tag for Prince of Wales Island, uh, the hunt for spring bear. It's my second time I'll be going to the island, and I wanted to try out some camera equipment and some audio equipment before we go to make sure, you know, that we're all dialed in. Last time I went to Prince of Wales, the I, my camera, my digital camera broke, my rangefinder busted, my my video camera busted. Uh, I think everything electronic went bad. My phone did. The only thing that didn't end up in the toilet was my uh, jo my uh, Rhino GPS. It survived the moisture, but everything else <clears throat> got so wet it was just it was all she wrote. So, I'm taking my DSLR and my microphones and all this sensitive electronic equipment up there to capture some really cool footage of this bear hunt, but I'm, I'm a little concerned that it'll get wet. So, uh, I got my brother-in-law, Bryce, behind the camera, and uh, he's, he's running this camera here. And for those of you who are listening to the podcast, you, you can't see the video, but if you go to our website, you'll be able to see uh, the video for this podcast. Uh, anyway... He's got a little hood over the top of a little rain jacket um, that they put over the top of the camera. And uh, we're testing this thing out. It was raining a little bit earlier. So it looks kind of like this. Uh, and it's by... Uh, Aquatech. Yeah, Aquatech Sports Shield. Um, I got a B and H photo. <clears throat> and I'm hoping that it's... It, I actually used it last year. My problem was I couldn't figure out how to really, it's great for photography, it's a little tricky when you're using, you're trying to get audio with it. Um, Cause I didn't really build it to, to handle my, my audio mic and all that kind of stuff. So we have a little mic set up we're, we're testing today. Um, anyway, so we're out here testing the equipment but we thought we'd shoot a little podcast on, um, on actually on blacktail deer. And so, Prince of Wales, I've been there once for black bear, and I've been there once for um, Sitka blacktail. And I decided, uh, so I'm going back for spring bear, but I'm, I'm really dying to get back to hunt blacktail again a second time. Um, now, out here where I grew up on Redland Road, uh, a lot of guys, you know, don't really, there's, there's blacktail people those that are into blacktail they're pretty fanatical about it but uh it's sort of like coos deer like 
guys get into like this species and it becomes their passion or whitetail, <clears throat> whatever it is, for me and for Anthony for a long time, blacktail was sort of our most exciting kind of adventure. Um, elk is always, elk hunting is kind of top of our list, but if it, when it comes to deer, blacktail is a really close second as far as just you know, for us, a trophy blacktail is pretty dang special. So, um, my I wanted to talk a little bit about blacktail deer and hunting them. Just just my experience with them. And I grew up out out here, and my experience is a lot different than Anthony's. And I'll I'll tell you sort of how it happened. So, <clears throat> when I first started hunting blacktails, I met I met Anthony, and I was at his house. And on his wall, he had this uh, these three blacktail trophy mounts, and they're just beautiful deer. And I had never really, um, I thought they were small mule deer. I, I mean, I knew that little about blacktail, and uh, and and I and I didn't really learn to appreciate them until years later. And the cool thing with blacktail is, to me, I think that they're, they're the prettiest deer. But I'm a little, I'm a little biased. If you're, if you're looking at just the beauty of, of a deer, um, a blacktail buck with the double throat patch, the the ears, the dark chocolate horns, they have a look that just gets me pumped. And part of that, I think, is because they're so hard to find. Like they're so hard to hunt. You just don't see them, like you do big mule deer like there's a lot of footage of big mule deer you can go online you can check them out um, there's a lot of footage of big whitetails too when it comes to blacktail bucks especially when you're in the coastal range of uh, like Washington Oregon even up into uh, Canada Alaska you are dealing with you know especially where we are in Oregon City in Oregon in the Willamette Valley where I hunt um, the blacktail bucks look uh, they're just they're very nocturnal I guess if we're talking blacktail behavior big mature bucks just don't show themselves and uh, so I'm looking at these deer and they're just beautiful on Anthony's wall and so he said I'm like where did you where'd you get these deer and he tells me right here in Oregon City and I'm like really he's like yeah and he lives just about five miles from my house and so I said where and he's like well, I'm kind of in my backyard and that was I was like really you 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 hunt deer like right here and how do you you know are they big bucks I mean I mean is this what you see all the time and he's like no I mean they're out there but he's like I don't I don't really get a glimpse of them well that started getting me interested in them and uh, I started uh, I got some game cameras and I hung them out here on my on my our land out here and we have about 20 to 30 acres that sort of uh, that uh, is our acreage is about 10 acres 15 and then then there's about another 10 or 15 that sort of is borders our our land so you know you got a good 20 acres of of property out here but there's houses all over it and uh so i wanted to i told anthony well there's no bucks at our house i've never seen one and literally i know the back i know this place like the back of my hand i mean i i played here with my cousins and uh and friends since I was like knee high. And I'm out here um, catching crawdads in Abernathy Creek and I'm down here on some of the ponds that we have here. We are playing in the woods from sun up to sundown and we have never seen a big buck out here ever. We saw a few spikes and forked horns growing up and we saw some at night a couple of times driving down the road. But for the most part, we just see a few does and that's it. And never once growing up out here did I see a big buck ever never happened so we I was like well Anthony maybe it's just you have big bucks where you live and I don't have them where I live and he kind of uh, laughed about that because he's like if you have does you have bucks man I mean bucks breed does when the rut comes on they're going to be there if you've got does you've got bucks so my cousin Ben and I we decided to get a bunch of game cameras and hang them up all over our land and see what's out there. Well, we did that for two years and uh, put some salt out by the cameras just to see if we could get some action going. And didn't get a single, didn't get a single 
uh, buck sighting, like just some spikes, uh, a couple forkies. So we did that a couple years, and even through the rut, didn't get any get any action. So we moved our cameras around for the next couple of years, and Anthony was telling us there are deer out there. I'm telling you, there's bucks out there. And uh, finally, as we hung cameras, we started to figure where we got. We started to find areas on this little tiny patch of 15 acres where we were getting a lot more uh, activity and, and movement. Long story short, after about three or four years, we started to figure out, we started getting some bucks on camera and big deer too, but only at night. And, uh, and that kind of started our journey like into blacktail and, and hunting them more seriously. As soon as you, we started seeing them on camera, I was like, okay, this is just, they're like a unicorn to me at this point, at least especially where I've grown up. They're just not a lot of them. And when they are there, it's like the rarest of rarest circumstances that you, you catch one on, you catch one. So literally my camera's up 365 days out of the year and I've got maybe 10 different days. And mind you, all in November during the rut where I've got pictures of bucks and then nothing after that the other 355 days of the year. So it, it really sparked my interest. Um, in the meantime, Anthony started taking us hunting up in some of the foothills of like Mount Hood and up in the Cascades. And we started uh, hunting blacktails in, in other areas besides right here at my place. And the blacktail behavior was a little different when we got into some of the mountains where there was snow and the bucks are um, migrating down and and we got into a lot of bucks and we shot a few and that was really fun but in the meantime i was still putting cameras out out here and some salt licks and checking it all out and kind of just getting a feel for my own land and i was fascinated with the deer out here because i grew up here and didn't even know this whole secret world existed of deer behavior and deer activity that i didn't know anything about well, interestingly, as I started to get into deer behavior more and, and herd behavior, and I started watching a lot of these whitetail shows, and you get out there and they're putting food plots down and they're talking about herd management and don't shoot this size buck, um, which gets into a lot of like questions about <clears throat> baiting deer and whether you whether uh, you should or shouldn't and whether a food plot is baiting or whether it's it's um, just herd management and stuff. Well. I decided, I started looking around trying to find out, well, how can I get more deer on my property, this little piece of property that we have, and how can I get <clears throat> big bucks out here? And then how do I get them out here and get them to stay? Uh, Cause it would be sweet to have my own private property with some big bucks running around that, that I get to have all to myself without other hunters coming in and pushing them or bumping them. And, <clears throat> And I knew there was a few out here because guys would shoot one here and there a mile from my place. So I, I knew they were here. They just weren't on my property, you know. And I, like I said, I just got this little 10 or 15 acre parcel. So I started doing some reading and I tried everything. Every kind of bait imaginable, I started throwing it out on the ground just to get pictures of stuff. Just to see if there was something out here worth hunting. And so I was throwing um, apples down and, and uh, I was throwing like cob and stuff like that. And people get into this there's a lot of debate on some of the forums on whether you should be throwing uh corn down or what you should feed deer for for health and management of the herd and stuff and i at the time wasn't really paying attention to that as much as i was just trying to get something out there to attract a deer so i could see what's out there <clears throat> and um what i found with blacktails and other guys have had success with different feeds uh, different strategies you know they have all those deer feeders that that whitetail hunters use and especially in Texas and stuff like that where they throw these feeders out and get a lot of activity stuff didn't really work for me didn't really work out here not the way that apples did apples are like uh, they're like crack I mean the deer out here just they just come on it like just crazy so I started uh, I was like you know I started just grabbing apples from uh, trees just right around here on the ground and the more the rotten the better and I started just I throw them in a pack or my a garbage can and then I just go out here and dump them in the woods by my by uh, my camera I did that for for a while and I started getting a lot of deer activity and one thing led to another and after about probably 
a, a two years of doing that, um, I was like, man, these deer eat these apples so fast that I'm like constantly getting apples from trees. So I um, called some apple orchards around here. And for the last five years, what, I, what I've been doing is I actually ride up to Hood River and there's a few few different uh, apple farmers up there and they get all these apples and then you can buy, I buy like 1,600 pounds of apples. Like I filled my whole truck back bed up with a couple of, of bins of apples and they, they can be totally rotten or, or really far south. Not very good, the deer don't seem to care at all. In fact, they almost seem to prefer the ones that are older and sweeter. So I go and I get like a truckload of apples starting around, um, right after elk season you know usually right after september 30th i'm i'm picking up some apples some years i've done earlier like all through september it just depends on what i'm doing but come sep come september 30th i'm putting apples out in three locations on our property um every saturday and i it's a chance for me to get some exercise too i throw them in my backpack i put out about seven thousand cubic inches of apples and I do maybe that, maybe two different loads, and I dump them on the ground. Well, it's been cool to watch what's happened. So I put the apples out, and the deer have just flocked to this property like crazy. And over the last five years, like I said, I've been getting a lot more, I get very, very consistent uh, deer behavior and deer patterns. And I've been watching all the different deer come out here, and it's been really fun to see the does and the especially those does with young fawns they hit the apples i mean they kind of they need a they want that high calorie food source and so they come out and they're constantly hitting the apples but the 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 other deer the older deer older does uh if they don't have fawns or the older bucks they'll hit it hard uh until right around um well right around uh the rut and as soon as some of those does come the bucks won't come in, in at all in fact bucks don't seem to eat during the rut as far as i can tell i don't even know where they live where they're at yet i, I have been putting cameras up all over this place for years now and um i can't really pattern a buck and what i found is i i don't know that we have a lot of bucks that live out on this land uh year round but i know that during the during the rut they show up as soon as those those come into heat i get some big bucks showing up big bucks that i never knew even came around here and now they're coming onto my property and they're chasing does all over the place on my property and that didn't used to happen before i put these apples down so it's been a really cool experience um and i feel like apples are a pretty natural food source um you know they're there's a some apple trees and orchards up around our place and up a, up our road a little further and i always see deer at night just pounding those apples so i was like well you know it's it's not corn it's not a i'll put i'll put apples down and we'll see what happens well now it's just become part of what we do every season and it's really exciting to put the apples down and and see what activity there is and normally right around um halloween is when I start seeing my first bucks. Maybe, maybe you know, October 25th, I'll start seeing some bucks. There's a lot of I'm starting to see them earlier and earlier every year. It used to be not until like the 30th or the 31st of October did I see a single buck. Now they're starting to show up, you know, around the 20th or 25th even um, in October, and they're just cruising through d during daylight. A lot of the activity is at night still, but but there's still random daylight activity right about that time and uh then the 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 deer keep chasing the does uh you know keep they're, i think they're just out there right there it's pre-rut and they're really just looking for um some does in heat right then i mean and out here at least my herd i see the same does as, as far as i can tell they have the same fawns and I, i'm watching them i'm getting them on camera you know, and I see, and I think they're territorial because I see like maybe six to ten of the same deer hit certain spots, and um, they don't move. Even if I let one apple pile run out for two weeks, 
those deer that are eating on the one apple pile, they don't migrate even the 400 yards to where the other pile is, where there's some different does on them and, and younger bucks. And so it's been really interesting for me to under, observe blacktail herd behavior. And um, what I've what I've what I shoot for now is right around November 5th to the 15th it will go insane bucks will be running all over and they'll be fighting and um, all I gotta do is try to find a spot somewhere I might the thing is is what I've noticed is I see like one or two deer during that ten, big bucks during that window and they haven't always presented me with a, a shot opportunity so a lot of guys that have a hard time blacktail hunting for one because there you don't see anything you know you might sit in your tree and hunt 10 days and see uh see one deer and it's a doe and so well they, they need to get in a tree usually to have a better chance of seeing them too right well what i've noticed is <laughs> bryce my brother-in-law was just saying that you know getting into a tree you know, there's different hunting tactics, right? And and so for chasing blacktail, Anthony likes to hunt on the ground a lot. <clears throat> and he does spot and stalk and he still hunts through the trees. And he's looking for, for rutting behavior, bucks chasing does. And um, and he's even grunting a little bit and he's he's calling bucks over and he's rattling. And, um, and Anthony's a blacktail kill, killer. Now, out here where I live on this property, it's a small, small acreage, and what I find is uh, through trial and error that if I get out and I hike the property, and I call and I rattle and I do that kind of stuff, the deer will disappear. They'll literally leave for two to three weeks, and they won't come back. It's like I just I I just left some scent, and you know it's just, it's not big land. This isn't big property. This is a small piece of property. I'm talking about hunting right in my backyard, so it's not like like I can just wander around on it. Now, when we go to the mountains and stuff, or when we're hunting blacktail in the coast, you know, you you can just wander the woods, you're in big country. But when you're hunting like, kind of right here in the city, sort of in rural areas, uh, next to the city, it's a different kind of ball game. And what I found is, if I have a trail that goes into where my tree stand is set, kind of like following like how the white other whitetail hunters do this, the idea is to be able to get in to your spot without spooking anything. Get in there as quietly as you can and leaving as, as little scent as you can. And there's different tricks and tactics for that, which I employ as many as I can. But my goal is to get into my tree stand and up my tree without spooking anything or them even knowing I'm there. Get in the tree, and I like to hunt from a tree. And my, my thing is out here, I've hunted blacktail a lot of different ways, and uh, and same with elk. I've also hunted them. I've hunted a lot from a tree, from a tree stand. And there's a, guy, a lot of guys who hate hunting from a tree stand, especially out west where um, you know we're not as uh, accustomed to it as a lot of whitetail hunters are. But hunting from a tree stand allows me to see things that I have never seen before. I I'll add a bunch of video footage to this podcast if you go and watch it. And I'll, I'll slip in here while I'm talking. I'll, I'll overplay some scenes of Blacktail um, out at my place. Fil me filming from my tree stand where you can see um, some bucks in high definition coming in. Younger bucks that I passed on this season. Um, there's one buck out here, I call him Lefty. And I've been after him for like three years now. So uh, he's, he's probably... He's probably five years old. He could be four, four and a half, but he's probably five. Um, and so he peaked. I mean, he. what I've noticed is that these bucks can just jump uh, in antler size and class between, by the time, between three and four, there's a big jump. Um, four and five could be a huge jump, but usually after that, they start regressing. Um, that's what I've seen as I've watched and tracked these deer. So back to the topic of getting into a tree. Yeah, I like getting in a tree because when I'm up in a tree, I can see, I mean, I get to watch bucks fight each other, uh, young bucks sparring. I get to watch does 
chasing and each and other. Literally, literally right. They're literally me. right underneath me, and I get to watch this cool herd behavior. Um, last year, just some crazy, like, really, really, like, amped up spike buck. His, his antlers were probably this tall. I mean, he was just this little dude. Big body, though. That dude had some pent-up frustration. And he was just terrorizing deer. Any doe that came near him, he was like, he, he'd chase her all over the place. And he and he's grunting all over. And there was, like, six different does all around me. And this boy would just chase from all over the mountains, over the hillside, like 100 yards, different direction. And then they'd all come back toward the apples and feed. And then he'd run and chase them off and come back and feed. He'd run and chase them off. And it was just this endless thing for like three hours. And uh, it was really cool to watch that. The other thing that I, that I saw this last year, every time I get in a tree stand now, by the way, I try to spend as much time as I can in the tree. Um, because I never know what days those does are really going to come into season and and it's magical as soon as they do like like big deer come out of out of the woodwork and I'll never see those deer before then I'll never see them after like they just they disappear but during that window it's magical and and they're they're doing stuff that they they I don't I don't know what they're doing the rest of the year because I, I can't catch them on camera on trails coming into our property or leaving our property um, I'm still trying to figure it out but what I do know is if I'm in the tree in that, that window, um, at some point the does out here come, come into season and I'm going to get bucks coming through. And um, I've been able to see some big bucks like about 80 yards, 90 yards off just go at each other, just fighting. Now if I was on the ground, and I've tried hunting from the ground, <clears throat> eventually, because I'll have deer come from all directions, uh, toward this apple pile we have they'll they'll smell me uh, at some point they'll, they'll just pick up my scent but when I'm up in the tree I'm on the slope the thermals pick my scent up I'm not far from like three or four other houses either and I think human scent is faint human scent from these houses is pretty normal so if they are picking up my scent while I'm up in that tree because I'm scent free I've done all the soap and I've tried to stay clear I don't think they really pick up my scent and when they do it's not strong um, I just know that it works I mean I'm up in the tree and there are deer everywhere so what I'm waiting for is a big buck to show up um, and uh, and get on these does last year this nice wide heavy uh, younger buck I never seen him before he shows up he's a three by two but he's just his frame is big I can tell he's a young deer, but he's big. And I can tell he one more year he's gonna really be big. Another year he'll probably be huge. So I'm for at least for a blacktail. Um big, big blacktail buck. So I'm excited to see how he he grows up. But last year he came out and he did this behavior where he um I've seen like whitetail do this kind of thing, but I've never seen blacktail do it. And he comes in and he squares off with another younger buck and then he musked the area like he he sprayed this scent all over and it made this weird like gassy like 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 fumigation and he did it like three times and and uh you get to see him bristle their hair up and then their mountain does it was pretty cool so i get to see all that stuff when i'm in a tree that i've never observed i have observed from a distance with with binoculars um, when I'm on the ground, but um, hunt, like I said, hunting small property, it's a really neat experience. So I look forward to it now every year because I know, I mean, I think this year I sat in my tree stand probably 12 days and I saw deer every time I sat. And usually I see deer three to four times in the same day, um, just all day long. Um, something that I learned over the years, at least where I'm at, is 
um, blacktail are pretty nocturnal and so as soon as the sun goes down the activity goes up exponentially and um, they'll hit those apples in the night and they'll feed up until right at daylight and then right as the sun is coming up I've noticed they don't want to be out like in the in-between light feeding so um, they'll walk off and leave the leave the apples intact and they'll go off about um, they'll go off into the trees and as soon as the sun comes up and it gets past that twilight kind of half dark half light and it's been about it's and there's good daylight out for about 20 or 30 minutes they'll come back and they'll feed for another 30 or 40 minutes and then they'll leave well usually they'll come back around 10 o'clock and then they'll come back later around one and it's sort of like this that I haven't been able to pattern and so that's what their feeding behavior but that's not their rutting behavior as soon as they rut as long as they don't think there's anyone in the area they just run all over the woods um, back in there near those apples and the bucks push the does and the boat the bucks fight and so what I found is I if I my, my biggest thing though is not to be spotted and so I know a lot of guys have trouble uh, like they say if you hunt in the morning then you can get down before dark before you get stuck in your street tree stand after dark because you don't want to spook anything if you've got deer coming out and feeding in an area you don't want to get down and and start walking off because you'll spook the deer but what I found is um, the alternative is you know getting in there in the morning I have not been able to get into my tree stand pretty much every morning they're they're already there feeding in the dark and even if I go there at like three in the morning they're already there so I can't really get in in the morning and I found it doesn't pay I rarely get a lot of buck activity early in the morning anyways which is ironic because a lot of guys have different different experience so I usually wait until noon like 12 o'clock and then I slip into my area and usually right then like all the deer are off bedded down so I can get in there around 12 o'clock get in my tree and settle in get my camera all hooked up because I'm filming everything now get in my tree and I can sit there and usually by two or three o'clock I'll start having deer just materialize and come in and feed on the apples I'll have them chasing each other I'll see rutting behavior I'll see uh, and I'm just hoping that the big buck shows himself and uh, and I've shot a couple of big bucks now with that strategy and I just kind of hold out and then when the Sun goes down usually they are right on the apples and they feed for a while I wait till about if I'm stuck in there I can hear them feeding I just wait in the tree and I'll wait about an hour even and then after about an hour I'll uh, climb out of the tree and um, get down on the ground and they can kind of hear me a little bit but I got this trail that I've made into my spot that has no brush on it I've clipped away all the branches all the anything I might bump into and leave brush my pants or leave scent on I've cut it all away <clears throat> and the ground I usually in the summertime I'll clear it so it's just dirt you know not a lot of brush um, uh, and that way I have this this clear path that's mostly dirt and I have run rubber boots I'm going into this area without leaving any scent on the ground I'm getting in there climbing into my tree and I'm hunting there I'm getting and I'm getting just some great excitement some great buck footage and it's just fun all all season long and now over the years blacktail has become one of my favorite because I know all the bucks in the area mostly and then there's always some new guys that are going to show up that I've never seen before which is just really cool to see I might see them just one time and they never show up again but I never know when I'm in that tree stand when that day might be when when a monster walks in um, and for a few years I started taking every buck that was just mature mature enough and I brought some I brought to right out here this is a buck for those of you that are watching on camera you'll be able to see um, those that are listening I just got this chocolate horned uh, blacktail buck he's not very old but and not very very big but but um, he's he's that classic uh, like kind of younger buck that 
you know, most blacktail hunters are pretty excited to get their hands on or even see. And uh, so he, he uh, I started shooting a bunch of guys like this. And, and, uh, and my dad and some other buddies would come out and, and they hadn't really had any luck shooting blacktails with their bows. And so they got to come out here and chase, um, chase some bucks and shoot some, some younger bucks. And it was really exciting for them. Well, what I noticed was after a few years, I stopped seeing any mature bucks. It's like I, there, weren't, there weren't a lot out here to begin with. And we harvested all of the age class that was going to grow up and be big. And so I was like, I kind of didn't put a lot of stock into property management or herd management on my property because I was like, you know, I'm just, I should be just happy with any buck that comes across my land. And how do I know that Joe Johnson over here, you know, behind my house isn't just going to shoot the buck when he gets a chance? Well, what I found over the years is um, herd management, at least where I'm at, absolutely works. That when I pass on a big buck, he's there the next year. When I pass on a mid-sized buck, I should say, he's there the next year and he's even bigger. And I pass on him that year, he's even bigger that next year. The, but the problem is they get smarter and smarter and less and less um, willing to show themselves in daylight. A mature blacktail buck, I mean, he just doesn't come out. As soon as they get real big, it's really hard to find them. It's really hard to get them, especially during daylight. So, passing bucks has really paid off um, because now I've got some age class out here that are, are very, really nice sized bucks. Um, if you shoot them when they're, when they're this size, you know, you, they can't grow up to be bigger. And I also um, used to think that uh, if you shoot, uh, it like maybe this buck wouldn't have grown that big anyway. Like, you know, maybe his genetics just didn't get him that big. Well, what I found is some of the bucks that I passed on, they exploded in size um, between three and four years old, four and five years old, that and where I thought they weren't gonna grow that much bigger, and they did. So now I'm like, you know what? If he's just a young deer, I'm just gonna let him walk. I'm gonna let him do their thing out here, and I'm gonna hold out for the big ones. And now I've shot a lot of young bucks and mid-sized bucks, so now that's that's kind of my new challenge is going going there, and it's just exciting because they're so hard to find. It's so rare, but um, but yeah, passing on the younger bucks and the mid-sized bucks, I think is well worth it if you're if you're interested in really getting a big blacktail buck you know i also like to fill my meat with freezer <laughs> fill my freezer with meat and so over the last few years you know when i can i'll shoot a doe instead of a buck um because uh, if if i'll pass on the young bucks and i'll shoot does instead and uh, i'm kind of experimenting with that to see what kind of impact that has on the herd and the group what i found so far is it really didn't seem to make a difference in terms of um it's like when, when uh, I shoot a doe, uh, different does just move in and, and take their place in this little property we've got. Um, but when I shoot a buck, it seems that it seems to just wipe them out. Like they don't, uh, the bucks don't come back here as much. I get, a, so now I, you know, I've got lefty, I've got slick, I've, I've got a few bucks that I'm tracking and I'm hoping, you know, I get to see. And, Every year they escape me, uh, I hope that they show up the next year. And it just makes it real exciting because um, to have a big deer in your woods that you know is here um, and, and to chase them. So, so that's sort of my, um, my experience with blacktail out here, you know, trying to, trying to kind of adopting some, some whitetail-esque uh, herd management on small property. Um, I still get out and hunt areas uh off my land where there's some especially like uh, in the cascades there were there's some edge bucks that are kind of half mule deer half black tail that are just really big which anthony has got me kind of hooked on too but black tail are just gorgeous um their ear size next to their antlers next to their i think coastal black tail are gorgeous i like the chocolate antlers um the throat patch i mean they're just to me a really beautiful deer um 
and uh, and just the fact that they they're they don't show themselves a lot during the daytime, and and they're so they're so hard to find. It just makes it to me. It makes it really just like like I said, like you shot a unicorn, and and so it is really a neat experience to to track them and to try to try to hunt a blacktail. It's not for everybody because you're going to get rained on all the time. Which now I have a couple umbrellas set up uh, over roofs I put over my my uh, tree stands because it's. It's just not worth uh, getting rained on the whole time. And now that I have some fixed locations I like to, to, to use, I have that luxury of putting a roof over it, staying dry. But for the most part, you know, you're getting rained on a lot. Uh, it's, it can be wet. And, uh, and for a lot of guys, you could not see anything. But you start putting apples out. Um, and uh, now I go through three or four bins of apples. And so, and the apples are about a hundred bucks a bin. So I might be into my, um, my thing about uh, three to 400 bucks, which is a lot of apples, which I don't have to put that many out. Um, but I look at what guys put down for, uh, you know, different, different feeds and different things that they, they do for hunting. And for me, um, to have the, all these deer running around on my place and, and have them all to myself, uh, it's pretty, it's worth the investment for me. It's, it's really not a big expenditure to, uh, to have that that enjoyment um so so you'll put them down once a week at first i put them down about once a week and i and, and i you... just pack in a whole load of them in my backpack and dump dump apples uh from my backpack um about 70 80 pounds in your pack. yeah 70 80 100 pounds i mean if they're really wet and rotten they can be more dense and i'll and put as you get closer they'll go through them is it as a well times a week, right? depending on how many deer are hitting it which it's more every year that's why i've added a lot more apples is the deer are hitting it so hard that um the apples will dump two full backpacks and those apples will be gone in two days the deer will literally camp on them until they're all gone eat them from morning until dark um it didn't used to happen like that but now it's become such a um you know you know going on seven eight years now of so much of all these apples out here that now it's just they're just used to it you know they're just it's just part of their uh their cycles you know and they're fat deer you know eating all those apples and they get real fat and they taste really good <laughs> taste really good i tell you that's the other thing too is blacktail out here when they're eating apples every day um and even the ones that don't like we hunt them out at anthony's place which is about five miles from here and uh and they're not eating apples like they're eating them here. They have a lot of apple trees out that way, but but not the loads that I'm putting out. Um, but I'll tell you that the bucks don't eat the apples. Um, they don't. It's like they know the cameras or they know the apples. I don't know what it is, but the big bucks won't won't hit the apples. They'll they'll uh, sniff the does in the dark and they'll come check out there in the dark, but they will not uh, eat. They just don't take the time until the end of the rut. Till till really late November. Um, I don't really see them hitting apples and then when I do I, they just eat a couple and move on um, uh, they just aren't really into the apples but the does and their fawns are into apples and the bucks are into the does so I just hunt over the does um, and it's funny because uh, a lot of guys are like do you use any scent you know do you like drag scent in do you put scent on a wick and hang it in the tree and you know, have you tried uh, like a tarsal gland and stuff like that? Well, what I found is um, the best success I've had is just providing such a good feed source and shelter on your land that now you're tra attracting quality deer to live here year round, or at least during those winter months as much as possible. And so that providing them with excellent habitat has been the best thing for for really um, helping their their uh, helping them be successful or helping me be successful getting the deer really out here a lot so uh, to trying to attract them with like a salt lick or with um, um, some kind of scent feet drag or something like that it's like it's like peeing in the wind. I mean, it's like there's just no like 
it's 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 such a small dent in in uh, in in making a difference. So, for example, I remember um, early on, I uh, I grabbed this you know scent and I dipped a little wick in the scent thing and I stuck it on a string and I kind of drug it back there. Or I did a tarsal gland, you know, and then I I, I I climbed in my tree and this has happened to me repeatedly. Some doe will walk up and I'll be in my tree and I'll have like like eight to nine different deer come in in the course of three hours four hours and they'll pee all over the place ten times as much as I dipped in that little wick and they'll urinate everywhere and they're fresh it's fresh and they're in heat right now and so when a buck comes in and he smells my little wick he doesn't give a darn there's there's real does peeing all over the place near these apple sets and stuff so um, for me the scent stuff is kind of a joke what I will say has worked is I've shot a buck some years I'll get a 600 series tag here in Oregon where you get to hunt <clears throat> you can shoot two deer and um, on those years you know I shoot a buck and sometimes I'll save the tarsal gland from the previous season put it in the freezer and then pull it out it works great on young bucks in, in mid-age bucks it works great I've taken the tarsal gland drag it behind me through the woods I get out to where uh, where my tree stand is I put the little the little tarsal gland up in the tree and climb in my tree and within within an hour I'll have bucks nose in the air and come come easing in and they're very curious about this tarsal gland and this smell and they'll walk from pretty far away as I'm 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 in thick cover like these kind of trees right that you see behind me so there's ferns and underbrush it's old growth out here or, or like forest it's not so much clear cuts where I'm at and there's no fields there's no fields yeah so I can you know especially during November I can see out in the forest under the the, the canopy of the trees uh, most of the trees have lost their leaves I mean I can see a long way but what will happen is um, those young bucks they'll smell that tarsal gland I'll, I'll see them come from 150 200 yards away and just get their nose in there and they'll walk right up to that tarsal gland and they're really curious too like they'll bristle their neck will, their hair will stick up and they'll walk in and stuff and they'll check it out big bucks though big mature bucks they don't do that I just I've not had it work ever so what I end up with is a whole bunch of little bucks that come in check it out and hang out and that's really cool to see um, and it doesn't hurt anything I mean but the the does sometimes the does won't come in while those younger bucks are there um, and uh, I don't know that it matters I don't know if the does are in heat or not but but I, I kind of want the does there because I know the mature bucks are gonna follow them so I don't really bother with it as much as I'm going for an old, older age class of buck and that's just what has worked for me um, uh, you think of anything else Bryce no I mean the other thing that changes is the when the leaves drop yeah you're like naked <laughs> yeah that's one thing you know the forest is out here is pretty thick and um, right around November you know 10th uh, the leaves really just come down and you know it dies fast the rut can just end quick you know so um, November 17th usually is when the second season starts when I don't have a 600 series tag and um, so when I'm hunting most years when I'm hunting from the 17th forward um, you know by then I'm naked the other thing I found is uh, you know if I can't hunt early because I don't have the tag then I'm not going to mess up I'm not gonna climb into a tree and spend all day um, I don't scout out there I try not to leave my scent at all I try not to get out in the trees at all I just carry my apples out drop them and walk out and as long as I go in the same trail and leave on the same trail and dump, dump, dump apples uh, I can tell from my camera I'll go in I'll dump apples I'll walk off ten minutes later some young bucks and some does will come in and start eating I mean they're like they must be hiding in the trees <laughs> waiting for me to drop and, and leave on Saturday when I when I do those drops um, they'll they'll come in they'll, and they'll they'll hit it right off the bat 
if I leave that trail and I go even 50 yards into the trees and muck about and, and go down a little further or circle up and, and look for some rubs or something like that, done. Those deer will not come in and feed for like two days. Uh, the, the, young, the, 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 the does and stuff, they will not, they're like, they're done, they move. And then, um, then the, the, the apple pie will just sit there, just sit there. They will not eat it. And then time will go by and then they'll leave. And, and uh, so it's, it's really interesting. I try to, to just get in on that same trail and leave on that same trail. And that seems to be, they seem to be completely content with that. Like I didn't disturb their habitat. But as soon as I walk around, like I said, um, and I figure that if, if that's what happens for, for, for those really young deer, inexperienced deer, those deer that aren't very cautious, then I don't want to be messing around um, with it, especially for a more mature age class deer, because if I go walking through the trees, I think they'll, they'll bust. So for, for days, like I said, I've wounded a buck and then tried to find it, and, or shot a buck and tried to find it. And as soon as I, I knew the season's over, I know the season's over, because as soon as I start combing the woods on this little 10 acres, and I start looking around, I'm following blood trails, and I got a buddy out there, and we're looking, deer are gone. They'll leave for two to three weeks, and uh, I won't see any more hunting out of my season. So, um, you know, now I'm like, uh, that's the other thing is, with blacktail, <clears throat> they're so nocturnal. What I found for me, since I'm not hunting early in the morning, because I, I've just, it just burned me so many times, spooking deer, um, and once I spook them, it changes their behavior all day. Um, it just, they're done. But if I get in here in, around noon and I don't bump anything and I just ease in real quiet and I take my time, I got my rubber boots, like I said, I get in a tree. Um, what I'm finding right now is um, the bucks are coming in, this big buck lefty. Like I saw, I had a chance at him like three times this year, but each time it was like, He'll hang out just on the edge of shooting range of where I'm at and thick, thick cover. And I think that's big buck behavior. I think they stay in heavy, heavy cover. They just, they don't like getting off, um, off those trail or, or into some open area. Um, and so he hangs up right at that edge and then he just like, walks back and forth in the thick trees and he's just grunting and he's upset and he's really ticked off that this doe is over here eating these apples but he will not move from that cover until it's so dark and he stepped out last year and i'm just i'm at full draw and i wanted to shoot him so bad but i just couldn't tell and i've learned from experience it's just not worth taking that shot i just i can't quite see through the peep i can't quite make him out um so i let him walk twice and i think i made the right decision but what I'm gonna try this year that I haven't done in the past is I'm gonna try to set up my tree stand set a little deeper into the trees and try to catch those bucks on some of these trails that are real thick um, that are maybe 50 yards to 100 yards from where they keep hanging up. And hopefully this year that'll give me, because those bucks are moving when it's daylight to get to where they are, where they hang up and wait till dark. So if I can get in there where they're moving during daylight, you know, I can get, get that opportunity. And I, I was listening to some um, other whitetail hunters on, some, on uh, some other podcasts talk about that strategy saying, you know, get, get away from a lot of those old, old bucks. They just don't want to commit. They're moving in some darker timber and some heavy, heavy brush where they got some brush right on their backside. They'll stay near those edges. But if they have to walk out in the open, which is kind of where a lot of these does are going and where my where my apple sets are because it's a natural apple tree area and but uh i decided i'm gonna try to get off the trail and so we'll try that this year but um anyway so that's kind of my my blacktail uh bit here um this is a uh, blacktail that i shot in prince of wales which i'm excited to go back for there and th there it's, it's a sitka blacktail and he was velvet um little you know, not a not a big deal. Sitka don't don't get real big, but um, the cool thing about Prince of Wales, and I'm excited to get some footage because I'll be up there, um, up there hunting bear. I'll bring back some. I'm hoping to make some pretty killer movie. I'm gonna um, 
pretty excited about that. But these blacktail, these Sitka blacktail, they are, um, you can shoot like, I think, I don't remember if it's four, three or four on Prince of Wales. Um, I shot three and you go into town and you can get a um, tag, uh, three different tags and, uh, and, and go up there and spot and stalk. And these deer really don't have a lot of natural predators besides bear, but but the bear, you know, it's it's easier for them to go after fish than it is to bother trying to kill a deer. So the deer are really, other than bear, there's not really anything else on the island. So um, they're not heavily hunted. So um, it's a pretty neat experience because you get to see them everywhere. But on Prince of Wales, you're not fighting. It, what you're dealing with is weather. Weather's just brutal. So um, I'm I'm kind of excited. I, I'm. Uh, we're going to shoot some podcasts on site right there on Prince of Wales and uh, and hopefully we'll get some cool video to share as well but um, that's what's coming up I guess kind of covered you know a little bit about the Gritty Bowman and, and uh, you know kind of uh, at least myself I'll have Ben and Anthony on here and, and Mark down the road and, and you'll get to hear a little bit more from them on um, some of their experiences and, and stuff but uh if you like the podcast, let us know. Appreciate it every time. I really do. Um, and uh, and uh, stay gritty.